Morning guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we've got a really interesting day because we've got a 2021 T6.1 in and we are doing something that we've not done before. So all of you viewers out there that have got a T6.1 and you want to do something like this, then you're gonna love this video. So this customer has come to us for other bits and pieces. We've already upgraded the headlights from the stock factory candles in the night to the aftermarket um, LED versions. So both, let both lamps in there have been changed to the um, LED and it's got the um, LED indicators and daytime running lights, which is really cool. Rich has already been working at the back of the vehicle because it's a barn door camper conversion for a rear camera. But the best bit is this particular head unit, which I'll show you above now, is the middle of the range of the three that come from the Volkswagen from, from factory. Now, it's got built-in FM, DAB, uh, and things like App Connect or Media for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but this customer wants more. So we are stripping all of that out. We're gonna fit an Alpine Halo 9. We're gonna retain the SOS eCall so that you've got the little button above you on the interior light is not gonna come up with a, an error on the dashboard and that still works. We're also gonna retain all of the menus. Now we have done another video before about retaining VW menus, but when you remove the factory radio from a lot of these newer cars, you lose access to all of the menus for simple things like central locking, tire pressure monitoring, um, parking sensors, a whole host of stuff. But we can still retain that. Uh, we'll be able to show you that retained on the Alpine. It's not an amazing bit of kit. Um, the quality of the graphics isn't brilliant, but the company that make it are working on it all the time. I'm sure that they will make it sharper and better, but it is what it is and it does what it says on the tin, which is the most important thing. So this customer tomorrow will be rolling out of here with a T6.1 Alpine Halo. Well, no, he's already gonna be rolling out the T6.1 because he bought one in, but we're gonna be adding the Halo 9, the SOS eCall retention, the menu retention, and getting it to work beautifully with his already upgraded speakers, subwoofer, and amplifier. And we're gonna show you the process from start to finish so that you can see exactly what's involved. And then if you're interested, which I'm sure loads of you will be, you can get in touch and get you booked in. We're done. Um, it's been quite involved. Uh, Rich has been working hard. So GPS antenna is fitted in the passenger side wing mirror. We normally always fit it in the driver side wing mirror. And that's because the factory GPS antenna is already being used for the e-call system. Um, then uh, we have fitted the microphone up top. Customers already fitted speakers and done sound deadening, uh, but showing you now above um, is the custom subwoofer install. That's the Alpine PWE S8. We couldn't have any other sub. Normally we'd always go for the SWC D84 AT6, um, which is the big underseat carpeted eight inch subwoofer uh, that's passive, but we've gone for an active um, PWB, PWE S8 and that's still an 8 inch sub but it's in a box and it's active because it's got inbuilt amp but most importantly it's connected up to the Alpine through RCAs without any aftermarket volume gain or base control knob because the Alpine controls all of that easily. Um, now this particular setup as I said earlier in the video is this is all very very new. I haven't seen a Halo 
in a vehicle like this yet. Now this customer's gone for Halo 9. We could be sitting here doing a video with a Halo 11 and it would look even more impressive. It wouldn't make any difference to how we fit it. It just means that you'd have a much bigger screen. The customer wanted to be able to have a Halo 9 in here. Richard's fitted um, an aftermarket reversing camera at the back. It's a barn door, so we can grab some photos, show you of that as well. And um, we've also done aftermarket headlights. So he's got a lot of tech in here and he's gonna be chuffed to bits. Now, this is, this, this new menu system or infotainment adapter or whatever you wanna call it is very, very new and still very much in early days. Now, the video we did earlier, uh, I think it was middle of last year, I think Richard and I stayed late one night and got uh, a double din radio to sit in this aperture and it's incredibly difficult. If you're watching this and go, yeah, I can do this, well, yep, good luck to you. Uh, we've had the whole of this dashboard apart. It's really involved. You've got a lot of cabling to hide. It's not just the radio and the CAN adapter for this. It's the SOS e-call retention wiring and box and module that needs to be hidden away. Then you've got the main menu retention, uh, the info adapter, which is a big box with dip switches all connected to this, which talks to the CAN bus of the vehicle. And that's how it then talks to this. So what I'm gonna do is Richard's gonna, um, Matthew's gonna jump in the back and we'll turn the system on and I'll give you a quick brief overview of what it can do. Now. We know there's going to be some haters out there because that's what YouTube is good for. But this is for the people that want to see a system like this in a vehicle like this. Yes, it can be done. Yes, we've done it. And yes, there's going to be some teething issues. There's going to be some software updates. There's going to be lots of things. But as everything evolves like it does, it will get better and better. So we're going to show you that working and then go from there. Right, just put the key in, switched it on. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, uh, Richard and I always want to make sure that um, everything is as neat and tidy and as perfect as possible. All the wiring looms are cloth taped, everything's fixed out the way, and we've had even the instrument cluster out so that we can gain access to the cabling behind. There is a massive wiring to hide. Now the T6.1 is renowned for not having much of depth behind. It's got a very shallow fitting depth for a radio. So you either go for some of the half chassis um, units that you can buy, but this customer wanted the halo. Now this is gonna open the doors up to all of the halo lovers out there for the nine inch and the 11 inch because you've got you know such a great bit of kit you can you can tilt it forward and backwards you've got your wireless apple carplay you've got your wired android auto you've got your class d amplifier you've got your dual usb and you've got your um class d amplifier what else if i was going to say you've got your tidal support oh and you've got your 720p hd screen what more could you want because it's certainly a lot better than the, the radio that came with this uh, yesterday. But most importantly, at the moment, as it stands, we've still got things like steering wheel control, that's fine, and that's connected and operated by the usual um, three and a half mil jack that plugs in and not what they call the UART interface. We've bypassed the UART interface, we've pushed it to one side, and we're using the info adapter menu retention device. Now the menu retention device is very, very simple. For you to um, access that, you have to use a combination of the steering wheel and you have to use the camera input. So what we've done is the menu box has two leads, one for the original factory camera, which this doesn't have, but we fitted a camera, and one for the lead for the camera to go into the back of the Alpine, and that's how we um, get this display. Now, this is where the haters come in, because this isn't very, very um, good quality. I can say that, you can see that, we can all say it, but if it's the only product on the market, then it's the only product on the market, and you either live with it or you don't have it, simple. But on here, the whole point of this is for you to be able to go in and active 
activate, deactivate and change your settings and you would never be able to do that if you took the radio out and didn't have one of these fitted. Now, some of you might scroll down the list here and go, well, I don't really care about some of these, but actually, you do need to be caring about this. You've got your parking, maneuvering, you've got your mirrors and your wipers, your lights, your opening and closing and your multifunction display, time and date, um, which is a common problem on a lot of vehicles. If you don't fit this menu retention, you are not gonna have access to change any of these things or reset bits and pieces in your vehicle. Now also, it talks to things like your factory parking sensors. It's a little bit clunky, uh, and the display isn't amazing. So I'll give an example of that. If I turn the air control or the climate, but it's not really climate, it's the one down from climate. It still talks to this and it's still getting a signal. So if I'm adjusting the um, air climate control like so, um, slight delay, it comes up here and there you go. You can see that it's changed from low, but it doesn't do anything else. I've turned the air up to maximum. I'm changing from hot from cold, hot to um, hot from cold, and it's not doing anything, and I'm changing my settings. Now, it doesn't do anything. So people would say, well, why have it? Well, you don't have to have it. You can, turn, you can turn the climate control function off, but maybe if you had the actual climate control on the next level up, then this would be of more use to you. Uh, you have things like parking sensors, so we can go into that in a second. Uh, I just wanted to show you. So what we do, let's go out of here. You have to keep going back. There's no touch screen operation, which you've got from the Halo. Then we go into uh, the info adapter settings itself. If we go into here uh, and go down to preferences, you can move the menu up, down, left, right, bits and pieces. You can even change the color of the skin or the dashboard. We've just kept it gray black because otherwise it looks a bit tacky. You can go into preferences. We've selected driver right. We've told it that it's got a camera connected and we want the priority and we've also set the brake um, parking brake source. So again, we can go out of here. You can go in and change the color as well. So climate, if you don't want the climate, you can turn it off and we can go back, select and go back again, select. If I go into the car settings, that's gonna give you your um, trip basically your short-term and long-term settings that the early Golf Mark 7s came out with and uh, the polos on the infotainment thing. I won't bother going into that because it's a bit boring. But, so let's go out of there. Now that's the whole point of having this menu retention and it works. So using the steering wheel, uh, I've now left the menu control and we're now back into the reversing camera that Richard's fitted yesterday. Nice, clean image, works beautifully. So, we've got the normal halo with all of the usual features and functions, which I won't bore you with, but we've done loads of those. If I put the car into reverse, this particular vehicle uh, has got front and rear factory settings. You've got the audible, front and rear sensors, but you haven't got the display because of how the system talks to the parking sensors and the camera. So all you will have to do is just press the dedicated camera button. You will get the camera image like so, but when you take the vehicle out of reverse so that the, hal the halo and the camera knows it's out, you then get the infotainment front and rear parking sensors. Now we have got our number plate on the front, that's the reason why you've got the um, the beeps at the moment. So if I put it back into reverse, because you're already in that mode, the reversing camera is going to come back on. So if you're maneuvering, you're going forward a little bit and then you need to go back a little bit, reversing camera is going to come on like so. It's not a problem, but let's go out there and there, turn off the parking sensors for me to get my camera image, which, yep, is a little bit annoying, but not a massive problem. You then have to hit the dedicated camera button. You've got your parking sensors, you've got your camera, job done. And again, you know, it's not, it's not amazing, but it is what it is. So this is a T6.1 2021 plate, came into us with the middle of the three head units available for this, um, with all of the menu functions on here. Um, it's got the standard multifunction steering wheel, not the haptic, but the um, buttons would pretty much be the same. No lights on the dashboard from the SOS eCall, 
and we've retained the menu, we've given him the halo, and we've also given him a reversing camera. He's still got access to his parking sensors and everything else. If you want this, then get in touch with us. It's not cheap once you've put all of the components together and the labor and the kit. It's worth it though if you want to get rid of what you've currently got from factory. Don't forget to visit our website, which most of the details will be on there. It's www.advanced-incar.co.uk. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends and family. If you're on a forum, put this up because we work hard down here in Dorset um, for perfection. We are at the mercy and limitation of the products that we fit, but we're always open to criticism. I say that not too much criticism, please, but criticism. Because, you know, we, we're highly critical of the stuff we fit to as well. And we will feed, feed this back to the manufacturers to, so that they can make this product better. But I very much, um, I'm, I know that we're going to get a lot of people interested in doing this. Uh, so therefore, this is far we're concerned. This is the first and here it is done. Halo 9 in a T6.1 with everything working as it should be. So I uh, hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.